And let me introduce the first person here, uh, which is Tim Frick. Uh, Tim is one of the founding fathers and a legend of the sustainable web design and sustainable web practices. Uh, he is uh, the author of the Designing for Sustainability, uh, published by O'Reilly Media. And uh, he founded one of the most famous digital uh, agencies uh, that works in, in the sustainable digital sector, uh, Mighty Bytes. So welcome, uh, Tim. And uh, Tim will talk uh, uh, to us about uh, sustainability in digital design and then talk about groups for environmental standards uh, for the internet. So please, Tim. Yeah, thanks so much for having me. I, I appreciate it. Um, and, and that is a very kind introduction. Um, uh, I think, you know, when we talked about prepping prepping for this conversation, um, you know, you wanted to, to hear a little bit of the backstory and, 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 you know, kind of the history and how we got to where we are right now with uh, sustainable digital design. And, and, you know, it is really rewarding uh, to see this this happening to the, the, this you know organizations and and events like yours happening um, and also just you know seeing the growth of sustainable digital design you know worldwide uh, really you know it seems to be a very um, what was a very nascent and small and niche kind of topic 10 years ago is really seeming to kind of be taking off right now which is really great. Um, and, you know, we, the climate crisis is an emergency, so we, we you know, no time like the present. Um, but, you know, the first thing that I ever heard of when it came to this topic was in 2007, there was a tool called CO2, CO2 stats. Um, and it was like a little kind of like Google Analytics is those little code you dropped in your website, and it was going to tell you what the emissions were. And I'd never heard of anything like that at the time. And right around the same time, I started seeing like academic reports and like independent news media covering the environmental impact of the of the of the web. Um, and I, I, you know, as a digital agency that, you know, builds websites for a living, I thought, well, is there, you know, what is what's this all about? Is there something that our small little agency could do about that? Um, but you know, the the path forward didn't seem apparent. It didn't seem, you know, obvious. I, I you know, I thought, okay, well, yeah, the internet has a big environmental impact. But what can I do about it as a, as a, as a small company? Then in, in 2011, we, we discovered the B Corp certification. Um, and it was a really, you know, our, our, my company is almost 25 years old now. Um, so we were well into the life cycle of our company when we discovered B Corp certification. And we went through the B Impact Assessment for the first time. And if you don't know anything about the B Impact Assessment, it's a really rigorous you know, questionnaire or survey that talks to, talks to you, asks you questions about all kinds of things, peels back all the layers of your businesses and, and asks questions about your ethics, your responsible practices, your environmental practices, how you treat your workers, what your role is within your community. So the first time we went through that in, in 2011, it was really eye-opening. And we thought, you know, we thought we were a really good, solid company. And then like many people who go through the B Corp assessment, uh, you know, we we had this kind of eye-opening moment where we were like, oh, well, there's actually a lot more we could be doing. Um, and because these two things happened around the same thing, we, we're starting to hear about the environmental impact of the, the internet and we're becoming a B Corp. We're starting to think about like how we could potentially meld those things. And so we started um, having conversations within our own team about how we could be more efficient, how we could be better about using energy, um, you know, how we could find green hosting for our clients' websites. Um, and we just kind of came around a, 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 a set of practices that we wanted to adopt. Um, and out of that came a, a tool uh, called EcoGrader, which we uh, released 10 years ago now um, in 2013. Um, at the time, it didn't have any, uh, there weren't any like well-known methods for calculating carbon itself, but there were a lot of tools and, and methods for, you know, uh, analyzing efficiency and, and analyzing things like green hosting and stuff like that. Um, I, I know you've had the Green Web Foundation as part of this uh, ethics forum as well. And, um, you know, we we use their, their, we were one of the early user of their, uh, their API, their green hosting directory. Um, and so EcoGrader, when it came out on Earth Day in 2013, allowed you to crawl a URL and it would give you a bunch of recommendations for how you could make it more efficient and how you could potentially host it with renewable energy, thanks to the Green Web Foundation. Um, and, and off of that, it just kind of started building from there. We started doing 
more of these practices internally at Mighty Bytes, um, but then also talking about them, blogging about them. And uh, eventually that led to a TED Talk and a book deal with O'Reilly, the one that you mentioned, Nicola. Um, and, and, you know, we got to this place where suddenly, you know, with a book being out there and, and, and realizing that there are other people that, are, that care about this topic, um, that we could grow community around this. And that um, one of those aspects was the Sustainable Web Manifesto, um, uh, and that's at sustainablewebmanifesto.com, I believe, and anybody can sign it. It's been signed by over 2,500 people. It was spearheaded by Whole Grain Digital, a, an agency, a digital agency in London, and I, I think you also had Tom Greenwood as part of this event, too. Um, they're very similar to Mighty Bytes and have a very similar ethos in the way they operate their business uh, uh, to the way that we do. Um, and they kind of spearheaded the, the the manifesto and reached out to people all around the globe to kind of get uh, a, a set of principles together on what a sustainable internet actually looks like. How does it work? How do we how do we use our practices to to actually build that? Um, and so they put that together, I believe, in 2019. Um, and and I think it's over, like I said, over 2,500 people have have actually solved it or signed it at this point. Um, and, uh, you know, that was one one where we started seeing a, a lot of community around this, a, a conference called Sustainable UX came out at the time, right around that same time. Um, and then, uh, you know, earlier than that, we, we, we started a, a W3C group, the World Wide Web Consortium, but it didn't really get a lot of traction. I think we were too ahead of our time. Um, so there is a, uh, the World Wide Web Consortium uh, is most well known for its work on digital accessibility. They're the creators of the web content accessibility guidelines. And it made total sense to us to create guidelines for sustainability similar to what we had for accessibility. Um, and so we started this community group way back in 2013 and 2014, but it didn't get a lot of traction until uh, the last like year or two. Um, and, and I think you know, the Sustainable Web Manifesto and, and, and all this kind of growing global community around this top topic, uh, uh, clean tech, um, uh, climateaction.tech and, and uh, climate designers. There's a bunch of groups out there that are, are, are kind of focusing on similar or, or kind of adjacent topics. Um, the worldwide web group that we created, the W3C Sustainable Web Design Group, really is meant to create environmental guidelines for the internet with the hopes that eventually they are become kind of default best practices. So that, that, you know, when people say, oh, I build websites for a living, these are the practices that you follow and that they follow ethical principles, uh, responsible principles and sustainable principles. Um, and so that, you know, that has been a growing and active group and, and our, our hope is to get about uh, our first set of guidelines and recommendations out sometime in early to mid 2023. We've been meeting regularly. There are separate committees for UX design, measurement, web development, uh, all, all these kind of topics around the internet and, and building websites and digital products. Um, and so each committee has been working on formulating its own set of guidelines with the idea that we'll pull them all together and create a, a set of guidelines that can then in turn be used uh, and, and kind of given the, the World Wide Web Consortium stamp of approval. So that's a, um, a, a current thing that we're, we're, we're working on. And, and like I said, hopefully we'll have, have uh, uh, the first draft of the guidelines. Anybody can join that group. Uh, if, you, if you go look at um, uh, the W3 community, uh, Susty Web is the name of the group. Um, uh, anybody can join it. Uh, I definitely encourage encourage people to do so. We starting in 2023, uh, we will be meeting monthly, um, and so we've been meeting kind of quarterly, and then the individual groups have been meeting separately. Um, but coming out in in 2023, we'll be meeting money uh, monthly so that we can fast track this work. And that's kind of where we're at right now. So, thank you very much, Tim, for your contribution. Uh, maybe uh, we don't have questions uh, from the from the public, but I I have a question for you. Oh sure. Um, how uh, can you explain us how the concept of sustainable web evolved during the time since you you were working on this topic? Yeah, I mean, essentially through through a lot of those efforts, uh, you know, we, we we came up with a series of guidelines for EcoGrader in 2013, um, but then, you know, we evolved that based on feedback. I think the great thing about all of this sustainable web design stuff is that that it's being done out in the open. 
Um, if you go to sustainablewebdesign.org, uh, it's a site that was created by Mighty Bytes and Whole Grain Digital. Um, and, and, and the idea is that it's meant to be an involving set of practices. Um, and, and it's really just, it's simple little like, hey, have you considered this? Have you considered this? Have you considered this? Um, and those practices have evolved a lot over the last 10 years. What, the, what we initially put out, a, Mighty Bytes initially put out a sustainable product manifesto just as a little PDF on our website way back in 2013. And the difference between what that first draft manifesto said and, and where we're at now is is monumental um, and I think there's a really uh, a lot of work being done especially in carbon calculation um, there the model that we've put on the sustainable web design site has some noted gaps like there's you know some assumptions that are made or some some kind of broad broad uh, figures that we've had to use because we haven't had the more granular data that is really needed and so um, the metrics group of that w3c group I mentioned earlier, um, is really focused on on rolling sleeves up and filling in those gaps so that that you know not only will we have a, an effective set of practices as designers and developers, but we'll also have some really good tools for actually you know getting effective carbon measurement out of out of digital products and services. Thank so you. It is, it is definitely evolving and it's moving fast. Um, yeah. and that's great. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think that. Also, uh, this is moving through uh, towards uh, a more corporate digital responsibility in terms of agencies, uh, considering mm -hmm. sustainability as a part of a wider set of uh, kind of rules uh, to apply when you, you develop websites. So keep attention not only on energy sustainability, uh, uh, but also to accessibility, privacy and stuff and stuff. Uh, so uh, maybe we can go to the next question. Mm -hmm. uh, that is, what is your wildest dream for the sustainability in the digital technology? Yeah, well, I mean, you you hit one of them on the head right there with talking about like when we talk about sustainability, there's an uh, there's a, a, a default state for a lot of people to have carbon tunnel vision. And really only focused on energy use and and as you noted there's you know environmental impacts social impacts in in the form of data privacy and misinformation and you know kind of a lot of those kinds of things accessibility and access to information especially for people with dis disabilities um, there's a whole wide range of, of 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 things that are kind of tangentially related and so when we say you know we take a sustainable approach to something um, uh, you know, we're thinking about those envir environmental, social, and governance things, an ESG approach to sustainability. So it's a much broader uh, term. And so, you know, I hope that we can, you know, evolve sustainability to the point where these become the default and the norm, um, and, and that, that, you know, you're being responsible is just the baseline. Um, you know, doctors have a Hippocratic oath. I think, you know, those of us who create the website, the, the, the web for a living should have something similar where we have a, a baseline of ethical standards that we follow that, that, that help us create the products that we create for our clients as, as well as for the companies we work. Thank you, Tim. So, uh, Pietro, can you please check if there are some questions from the people? Okay, there's a question from Andrea. Oh, yes, Maybe. what about open source projects out there about sustainable web uh, development? Are there any open source projects? Yeah, there are. Um, Green Web Foundation has been doing, I'm sure they talked about CO2.js. Um, when they were were talking with you, they have a lot of really great open source projects. Uh, I think generally there there's a lot of stuff on GitHub that is related to to you know uh, uh, sustainability, especially. Um, I, I've been a lot of people reach out through the sustainable web design site to us to you know ask questions about carbon calculation methods and and that kind of stuff. So there are a lot of open source projects on GitHub that are related to digital sustainability. Um, I also think that, like I said, CO2.js is a, the, the most noted one uh, from the Green Web Foundation that's an open, our open source carbon cal calculation script that can be added to any product or service, any digital product or service. 
Generally, I found, uh, you know, the World Wide Web Consortium is really a big supporter of open source as well. Um, we at Mighty Bytes are, it's part of our, we have a code of ethics on our website. If you go to our website and there's a code of ethics in the footer um, and open source is kind of peppered throughout that whole thing. It's a really, for us, it's a really important part of, of doing all of this is to, to create the solutions out in the open so that we can collectively improve upon them over time. <laughs> 